So with the Madrid Open underway, let's have a look at who actually has the most to gain and the most to lose at this event, because we all know there's a lot of withdrawals from this event, including the defending champion on Super. Let's have a look at who didn't play last year or who didn't perform last year and who could actually gain some points and also the players that played well last year that have a lot to lose. So starting with the players that have the most to gain from this event, Iga Sviantek. She did not play this event last year. She actually pulled out before the tournament started. So she has a thousand points that she could gain by winning in Madrid. Sticking with the WTA and Arena Sabalenka also has a lot of points to gain after losing the first round last year. She has 990 points to gain. Of course, we all know about the battle between Sviantek and Sabalenka for that number one spot. Sviantek's got a good lead, but if Sabalenka does well here and Sviantek doesn't, that could make a big difference. Going over to the ATP, Holger Runa. He has nothing to lose here. He can win a thousand points if he wins the event. And by the way, he played in Monte Carlo. You'd expect if he's healthy, that he'll be a real contender. And Daniel Medvedev, he actually didn't play most of the clay court season last year. So he has a lot to gain. A thousand points for him if he goes on to win the event. So some big names there in the top 10 that have no points to lose or next to no points to lose. And if they win, they could really give a boost to their ranking. Going to the opposite side now and the players that have the most to lose at this event. Zadam Milan Jabur, of course, she's not going to be playing. So unfortunately, she will lose those thousand points from last year. Jessica Bagula, last year's finalist, has 650 points on the line. So unless she makes the final, she'll be dropping a lot of points. Over on the ATP, we have Carlos Alcaraz, defending champion for the men. He has a thousand points on the line this week, so he has to perform well to save those points or defend the title to keep them. And Novak Djokovic made the semifinals here last year. He's not playing. He loses 360 points. And again, just like Sviantek Sabalenka, if Alcaraz does win this event again and keep those thousand points, it does close the gap between him and Djokovic going into Rome. And of course, Djokovic, we don't know if he's playing Rome. So some key names there with a lot of points to lose. And of course, some key names also with a lot of points to gain. So there you have it. That is what's going on with the points to lose and points to gain from this event. Of course, there's plenty of other players in between there. A few of the players like City Pass and those guys uh, made the semifinals as well. We can always talk about them. But it's going to be interesting because, of course, there's a lot of big names out for the men. And there are a lot of injuries going around as well with some players that I might have just mentioned, also some players that I didn't mention, someone like a Rabakina. We don't know how she's looking going into this event. She has some points that she can make up as well. But let me know down in the comments below. How do you think it's going to pan out after Madrid? Do you think we're going to get, you know, maybe Sabalenka closing the gap between her and Sviantec? Do you think Alcaraz can save those points from last year? and close in on that Djokovic number one spot. There's a lot of points up for grabs this week for some massive names in that top 10. The rank is going to be interesting in a couple weeks.